And there's more from the government. The cabinet has also cleared the decks for its Skill India mission. A new skill development policy has been approved. This will help streamline norms across 21 ministries and reap the benefits of India's demographic dividend. The government hopes to train over 40 crore people by 2020 under this new policy. Skill development will be promoted through the public-private partnership model and it will help connect entrepreneurs through incubators. The centre believes that the move will help India to put its human resources to better use. इन तमाम 21 के 21 मंत्रालयों की जो योजनाएं हैं उनको कॉमन नॉर्म्स के मुताबिक उनमें समन्वय लाना ताकि इन नौजवानों को महिलाओं को रोजगार के लिए तैयार किया जा सके प्लम्बिंग और कारपेंट्री से लेकर ड्राइविंग और हेयर कटिंग मतलब इसे सैकड़ों किस्म के प्रोफेशन हैं जिसके लिए स्किलिंग चाहिए सो इट इज नॉट जस्ट द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इट्स द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया द स्टेट्स द इंडस्ट्री द ट्रेड बॉडीज द एकेडेमिशिया द इंक्यूबेटर्स लाइक एज आई सेड आई आई डी चेन्नई आई आई मुंबई I, I am Ahmedabad, Banaras Hindu University, Aligarh Muslim University. Everybody is working together. Everybody has some kind of role in that. So there were government voices on the skill development policy. But exactly how is the government planning to take the Skill India mission forward? Shireen Wan spoke to the MD and Chief Executive Officer of the National Skill Development Corporation, Dilip Chanoy. She started off by asking him about the key focus areas of the mission. Take a look. Actually, the best way to explain it that if you take the training of, let's say, a customer service associate for the retail industry, uh, different uh, ministries used to fund the same training according to different ways. Someone used to give a per hour rate, someone used to give X thousand rupees, someone used to give Y thousand rupees for essentially the same training. So the first thing that this has done is actually try to equate the rate paid for training across different schemes for the same skill uh, within uh, the government system. The second change is that uh, whether you trained as a retail service associate or you trained an auto mechanic, in some of the schemes you got the same amount. So the second thing what this rationalization has done is actually give different amounts for different skills depending on the investment and time it takes to actually get that, uh, acquire that skill. The third change that has come about is that it has uh, looked at the whole mobilization process, the training process, the hand-holding after the person gets trained into a job, the incentives for placement and the monitoring post-jobs and actually allocated funds for that. And given an extra amount for the Northeast and a little bit different amounts for the left-wing extremist areas. So it's got in a hugely transparent way of funding schemes which actually equates, you know, you get equal amount of reward for equal uh, amount of training done in a particular skill. The, it also helps uh, to give a benchmark to the state governments when they want to extend this to their states because a lot of the national programs actually operate uh, outside uh, in different states. The next thing is that for all the uh, skills, they have actually through the National Skills Qualification Framework uh, laid down standards. So it is like speed, scale and standards. So it puts a set of standards across the things which are led by industry and developed by the sectors councils under the National Skills Qualification Framework. Okay, uh, so one is as far as rationalization of the schemes are concerned and the proposal also envisages the creation of a common norms committee which will be under the chairmanship of the secretary in the Ministry of Skills Development. Are we just adding another layer of bureaucracy? Uh, do we really require this because you've got the NSDC, you've got to work with various state governments, you've got the Ministry of Skills Development already. Do we really require another layer of bureaucracy? No, I think uh, what the, the cabinet uh, has really done here is provided a mechanism to uh, do very quick changes and, and, and adopt the uh, different norms if the need be for a particular region or a particular segment. So it's actually built in a bit of, uh, bit of uh, you know, quick uh, redressal 
uh, of any issues that any government scheme or any state government or anybody else uh, may uh, come across. It's not adding another layer. It is uh, This committee will also be clearing doubts of uh, other ministries of state governments. So it's, it's, it's really meant to speed up the process and not uh, you know, uh, introduce a layer. Uh, some of the programs uh, which, uh, which, let's say, yeah, which the NSDC or someone else runs are not necessarily covered by this uh, common norms because this is applicable to central ministries and departments. And NSDC is a public-private partnership, and we, we fund uh, entities to set up skill, skill training uh, institutes. If those institutes were to do a government program, they would be covered under that as far as that particular program is concerned. Sure. So let me let me end by asking you this, because, you know, yesterday we saw the launch of the Digital India mission by the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister both alluded to the skills mission being the next launch and perhaps uh, talking about it being as early as, as the next week and a half or so. What should we expect now as far as the skills mission is concerned, both in terms of outcome, in terms of targets? So if you, if you actually see the yesterday, the, the cabinet also cleared the skills, uh, uh, the new skills policy. The old skills policy uh, was, uh, uh, you know, announced in 2009. It had a kind of uh, a review clause after five years. The review has been done and the cabinet has actually approved the skills policy. So you will see the contours of the skills policy and how we are going to execute it perhaps being uh, you know, shared uh, on the uh, World uh, Skills Day, uh, which is uh, scheduled sometime later uh, this month. All right, so that's Skill India.